Hey everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be looking at the object selection tool inside of the key editor and also the draw tool inside of the key editor for programming MIDI. I'll do a separate video on these tools and what you can do with them in the main timeline window um, but I just want to focus on the basics for programming MIDI so you guys can uh, write music and you know create your beats and whatnot. So let's start with the object selection tool. The obset, ob, obset, object selection tool is probably the most used tool inside of Cubase um, because it allows you to do a number of different things. So let's start with that. To select the object selection tool, it's the first tool in the toolbar. You can click on it. It'll look like a normal mouse cursor. Um, another way to select it is by holding the right mouse button and selecting it from the pop-up menu. And the short key for the object selection tool is by pressing one on the keyboard. So let's say I've got another tool, I can hit one, and I'm back to the object selection tool. So it sounds pretty obvious what this tool does. You can click and select an object, or in this case, MIDI data, and we can use it to move it around anywhere we want. We can grab the sides of the MIDI and we can lengthen the note with the object selection tool. We can also shorten the note if we want to as well. And we can also do things like multi-select. So if I want to select more than one note, I can click and hold the left mouse button, drag the box over, and you'll see that I can move all of these notes in one go. I can then lengthen them and shorten them as well. Now another way to select notes using this tool is using the shift function to do a row selection which is a really handy tool. So here you can see we've got a bunch of MIDI notes that I've just drawn in. And let's imagine we've got a big session on the go and there's lots of MIDI going on. And I don't know, we've got the drums playing a particular crash uh, throughout the track but we want to select all of those crash hits and move it to a different symbol let's say we want it on a splash symbol or something like that one thing would one thing people tend to do is to use the area selection the click and drag selection to try and select all of the notes and they'll zoom out of the timeline and just just try and select everything but then you end up selecting notes that you don't want to use and it can be a bit of a pain in the ass so an easier way is using the row selection. So if you hold shift and double click on the note you want to select and all the notes afterwards, then just do that, hold shift, double click, and the note you select and everything afterwards will be selected in the row. This is a really quick way to, you know, select things that you want to move around. Now, when it comes to selection, if you want to multi-select, by clicking, you need to click on a note Hold shift and just click once and then you can multi-select notes. You can also use the click and drag function while holding shift as well to select even more if you wish. Uh, so you can do things like delete them or you know move them around and whatnot. Moving on from the selection tool, I think it's time to take a look at the draw tool, which is what you use to input MIDI notes on the piano roll or in the drum editor. So the draw tool is the second tool along. It looks like a pencil, pen, whatever you want to, you know, label it as. Um, so you can click on it from the toolbar at the top. Or again, you can use the right click toolbar to select the draw tool. And on the keyboard, there's a short key for it, which is number eight. But there's an even better way to select the toolbar. When you've got the object selection tool selected, the quickest way to work is by just holding alternate on your keyboard and you'll notice you can automatically change straight away to the draw tool. Now this short key is invaluable because when you're working with MIDI drawing stuff in and you need to select stuff and move stuff, you're not continually having to go back up to the toolbar uh, to go like this and then I want to draw more MIDI in, you know, or use the right click and do this. It, it's just time consuming, it's far quicker to use alternate and hold that for drawing in MIDI. Depending on what your grid setting is, when you left click to draw a note in with the draw tool, it'll automatically create a note which is to the size of the grid setting. So here we have sixteenths, it's gonna draw in little blocks which are sixteenths in length. And then if we 
go to apes and click you'll see that it draws in slightly bigger boxes which represent apes now if you left click and hold the mouse button you can drag the note out and this will always snap to whatever your grid is unless you specify otherwise um, and if you move the mouse up you can increase the velocity and you'll also notice to the left of the note there's a little box with a number popped up and this is to tell you what the velocity value is for that so you don't have to try and guess it when looking at the velocity lane at the bottom so you can see that that's got a velocity velocity of 59 this is you know maximum is 127 so moving up and down with the mouse while holding the left mouse button with your note you can insert a different velocity honestly i really don't tend to use this that much um, because you can always draw in the values in the velocity lane afterwards another thing you can do is when you draw a note in if you also hold control then the note will no longer be snapped to the grid so you can draw in a note at any length you want and not worry about it being snapped to the grid which is handy if you're working with orchestral uh, libraries um, but more so using the object selection tool so going back to the object selection tool if you hold control while you're dragging something out you're not going to be snapped to the grid anymore okay so you can just hold control to move things and then as soon as you let go of control it will automatically snap back to the grid but that just saves you coming up to the top here and turning snap off and on on the grid settings it's just a much quicker way to work but anyway going back to the draw tool once you've drawn in like a load of midi and you're happy with it the next thing we want to work with is the velocity lane okay which is at the bottom here now even when you've got the object selection tool enabled if you as soon as you move the mouse cursor over the line you'll notice that it changes to the draw tool automatically okay so you don't have to worry about selecting the draw tool for the velocity lane and what this allows us to do is just draw in the values for each individual note so we can come up with our dynamics and our accents for the rhythms and whatnot but something i want to show you with this is if we've got a bunch of notes I'm just going to copy these over if we've got a bunch of notes like so and we draw in the velocity values you'll notice that all the notes get changed okay and that's because we need to tell Cubase what notes we want to affect if if we want to be more precise so if I want all these notes to have a separate velocity to the ones above I select those notes and draw in the velocity values and you can see you know I can then work with them independently for things that, that's an important thing to remember with uh, working with velocity you'll also notice at the bottom in the velocity lane when you bring the mouse down over you get these four dots you have one at the left one in the middle one at the top right and one halfway down on the right so the dots on the left and right allow you to create slopes in the dynamics of the velocity so if you're doing snare drum rolls this is really useful because you can use the left one to slope the midi down or up like so and then the right one to slope the midi up and there you have a nice crescendo in the dynamics and again if you use the right one to bring them all the way down you can use the left one to bring the left sides up like so and do the reverse do a decrescendo in the midi velocity now I'm going to select all these and I'm just going to bring the velocity values back in line because I want to show you these other ones. So let's just give these a little bit of a change. In the middle there's two functions to this dot. The first one is, it's the symbol of it is like a little V on top of a line and what this will do is proportionately scale the MIDI uh, when you increase the velocity or decrease it. So you'll see that it, it the dynamics slightly change but they still proportionately stay in a line with each other okay now if you want to if you're happy with the dynamics of a piece and you just want to move all of the velocity layers up so they're harder or the overall performance is softer but the the dynamics are still exactly the same no matter at where they sit if it's hard or soft then 
If you move slightly to the right of the dot, you'll get a different symbol, and it looks like a, a, a triangle on top of a, a, a down arrow, uh, or an up arrow on top of a down arrow. And this will scale the MIDI proportionately to you know each other. It won't affect the dynamics between them. Everything will stay exactly the same. It's just making all of them louder or all of them quieter. While hovering over as well, um, if you've got the other tool and you're getting frustrated by you know moving the mouse in a particular way to be able to activate that, just hold shift on the keyboard and it will change to the up arrow, down arrow one so you can move them all relatively. The one at the bot the mid bottom right allows you to work in a way that's like an expander or a compressor. So if I if I scroll, grab this and pull it down, you'll notice that it's squashing the MIDI notes together, it's compressing them together, it's still trying to retain the die, you know, the performance, but it's it's making them flatten them out. That's good for taming uh, things. You know, so bring it all the way down there, they almost become flat. Now, if we do the opposite, it'll expand the difference between the dynamics, okay? So you get more of a radicalized performance. And this is really handy, to be fair, um, this tool, especially if you've got, I don't know, you've, you've, you've performed something in live and you've got dynamics which are like, like this. <laughs> and, you, and you need them to be a little bit more consistent you can just use this to try and bring them all down but retain you know the uh, initial performance and what you intended so it's a really handy thing to use now the other thing i want to show you going back to the object selection tool so i've just remembered this i don't know if i mentioned it before and um, but if you hold alternate you'll get a quick split function okay so in the previous video i showed you the split tool and how awesome the tool is when holding alternate, this gives you like a limited version of the split tool just to create quick cuts, like so. And also, while holding alternate, you can duplicate things by clicking and holding and dragging them over. So, again, the object selection tool is really versatile. Again, you can affect all these in one go if you want. I think that concludes the basics with those tools. In the main timeline editing window, the, they work slightly differently, but I'll do a, um, a different tutorial for that so you guys can understand how they work and some of the useful features. Uh, there's also another tool uh, which is under the object selector and it's sizing applies time stretching. Again, I'll cover that in a separate video uh, when I'm talking about the other stuff. I just wanna focus on the key editor for the time being so if i've missed anything obviously you guys will let me know you always do um and hopefully you found this video useful if you haven't give it a thumbs down if you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next cubase tutorial also got some uh, reviews coming up uh one on a new compressor which will be i'll talk about in a video some point next week and also an update to one of the sample libraries as well so again i need to look forward to all right guys have a good day and thank you for watching